Yeah, it's a joy to be with you uh, today, this morning. Thank you, uh, Paul and Sue, for having us, for being such great hosts for us. Um, Paul has been my coach and my friend <laughs> and uh, um, my brother, older brother in Christ for a long time, for many years, and uh, I'm thankful for that. And uh, I'm thank thankful to be here this morning and to share with you uh, God's Word from God's Word. It's just one verse this morning. I hope you're okay with only one verse this morning. And uh, that's from Matthew 16, verse 18. Um, uh, Matthew 16, verse 18. It's a known verse. And Jesus says here, I tell you, you are Peter, and on this rock I will build my church, and the gates of hell shall not prevail against it. I'm going to draw a few free short lessons for us this morning from this passage, and also I'll give you some testimonies, some examples from Romania about Jesus, Jesus' faithfulness in uh, building his church. Christ is building his church in Romania and especially in place where I serve as a pastor. Jesus said here, I will build my church. What is the church? What is the church? What is the fabric of the church, if you like, the essence of it? Is it a special building? I like this building, but is this the church? A special building? A special, a certain denomination? Jesus used here a specific word <clears throat> used in the Old Testament for the people of God, for Israel. The church, Jesus says, is going to be the new people of God, made up not only of Jews, but also of Gentiles, of non-Jews. That's why in Matthew 28, Jesus sends his disciples to make disciples of all nations. I'm, I'm so glad that here all nations are represented quite well, I would say. <laughs> and I'm, I'm, I'm part of this, and I'm grateful. And um, um, the church is the international, international people of God. Um, to be part of the church means to be a citizen of God's people. The Apostle Paul said to the Christians in Ephesus, who are mainly Gentiles, non-Jews. You are no longer strangers and aliens, but you are fellow citizens with the saints. You are citizens of God's new people. Between 2005 and 2010, I lived in the UK, where I did my theological studies. Although I had an English wife, and I spoke English okay, uh, for the Brits, I was always a foreigner. They were very... Um, gentle about it, <laughs> uh, diplomat. Uh, every time I was meeting a Brit, he or she was uh, asking me, where are you from? In a polite, as you know them, in a polite way, where are you from? And um, I was hearing <laughs> behind the question, oh, from your accent and from how you look, it's obvious that you're not from around here. <laughs> so where are you from? Um, I must say, I never liked that feeling of, of being a foreigner, of being a of an outsider. I never liked that feeling. That's why I like it in Romania, because I feel at home there. The Bible says that all of us are foreigners to God and to God's people. That's because of our sins, because of our rebellion against God. We are outside of God's people. But God, in His mercy, through Christ and His sacrifice, He made us citizens of God's new people. And that's amazing. A few years ago, uh, many years ago now, I received a t-shirt from your church on which it said, we are the church. Do you remember that t-shirt? Maybe some of you. Uh, I still have it somewhere in the house. <laughs> well, um, we are the church. You, you are the, the church here. We are the church there in Romania. We together are the uh, international people of God. We are the fabric of the church. We are the living stones, as Peter said, of this spiritual building, of this church, which Christ is building. But the church, as any building, has also a foundation. Has a foundation. What's the foundation of the church? Jesus said, you are Peter, and on this rock I will build my church. What is this rock? Is it Peter? Is it the confession of Peter? That Jesus is the Son of God. Is it both? A lot of discussion about that. It looks like 
<clears throat> is Peter, based on the play on words which Jesus used here. But other passages help us understand in what sense it's Peter. Especially Ephesians 2.20, where he said that the church is built on the foundation of the apostles and the prophets. Christ Jesus himself being the cornerstone. Christ Jesus being the most important stone in this building called the church. Also from Ephesians, we know that the apostles were the ones who received the gospel through divine revelation. Or the ones who preached the gospel for the first time, who made the first disciples, who started the uh, first churches, but also who um, wrote what we have now in the New Testament, wrote the epistles. So the apostles laid the foundation of the church through the gospel, which they received supernaturally. But what is the gospel? Because we use this so much, we use this word so much, what is the gospel in a nutshell? As Peter said, that Jesus is the Son of God who became the son of man, who became became man like all of us. Why? To die for our sins, to take the punishment we deserve for our sins, for our rebellion against God. And if we, like Peter, we confess that Jesus is the son of God, if we trust in what he did for us on the cross, we will be forgiven and we will be made citizens in God's people. Are you a citizen of Canada? Are you a citizen of U.S.? Are you allowed to speak about U.S. here? (laughs) Are you a citizen of China, of Hong Kong, of Romania? The question is, are you a citizen of God's people? Am I a citizen of God's people? Have you accepted Christ as your Savior? Have you acknowledged your sins and your need for Christ, of His forgiveness, and acceptance before God. If so, you are a citizen of God's people. You are part of his church. You are stone, a living stone in his church. Because the, ch- the church is built on the foundation of the gospel. And you, if you have the gospel, if you trust it in Jesus as your Savior and Lord, you are part of this church. You are a citizen of God's new people. The church is built on the foundation of the gospel. But listen to what Jesus says next about the church. I will build my church and the gates of hell shall not prevail against it. This is the force of the church, if you like. The gates of hell, of Hades, of death will not, will not kill the church. It will try to, but will not succeed. The church will survive through the centuries until Jesus returns. This is the promise. It's a great promise. No matter what happens, Jesus is going to preserve his church until the end. Christ is building his church. Christ is building his church here. Christ is building his church in Romania. Christ is building his church all over the world. I will give you now some examples from Romania, especially from Ploiești, where I serve. Christ is building his church in Romania. At the end of February 2020, I resigned as a pastor of the church where I served, I had served for almost 10 years. Some of you visited us in the previous church. Other leaders uh, resigned as well, and we started meeting in a different location. I've had some pictures, I don't know if they will come up anyway. Uh, we, uh, we started, um, yeah, this is the new location, the, the location we started to meet as a new group. We uh, started to pray to understand God's will for us. And pretty soon um, we felt called to start a new church in Ploiești. And the Lord in his grace turned something sad, a church split, um, something which couldn't be resolved the Lord turned this sad thing into something good for his kingdom. It wasn't the best way of having two churches, but God in his grace allowed us to start a new church in Ploiești. Two weeks after our first meeting as a new group, uh, the pandemic started. So it was just before the pandemic started. And we were not allowed to meet physically, so all the preparations for the new church happened on Zoom. I know you are familiar with that kind of thing. Um, so 
On April the 4th, 2021, we had our official launch in the Philharmonica of Ploest, a concert hall, as I, I said before. We started the church with about 25 people and 15, 15 children. And at the launch, we had about 100 people. That's, that was exactly the number allowed in that room because of COVID. But straight after the launch, we were not allowed to meet there anymore because of COVID again. So we went back to the first place. And uh, it, didn't ha it didn't help us, I mean, to start, to launch, and then go back to, to the uh, previous um, place. But we trusted the Lord. Today, I don't know what it's like here, but today nobody talks about COVID in Romania. But the Old Gloria Church Ploiești still exists. And the Lord formed it through COVID and then preserved it through COVID. And praise the Lord for that. Through what could have killed us so easily. We are such a fragile church. We are still quite a fragile church. And COVID could have killed us so easily. But the Lord preserved us when we are grateful for that. After we all allowed back in the Philharmonic of Ploesh, the ministry started to stabilize. We had just enough volunteers for every ministry. However, at some point, all of us from the leadership team understood that we needed to take a disciplinary action against one of our church members. It wasn't an easy decision to make, but we, we all felt called to do something about it. And because of that, we lost uh, three committed families, including the family of the one disciplined. We lost our sound guy, our one and only sound guy. <laughs> we lost our best vocalist, our children ministry leader, and our, and our bass guitar guy. We don't have a, a guy like that anymore. The church, as you can imagine, was very, really discouraged. Also, the finances, as you can imagine, were affected. But we made a decision, decision we thought would glorify Christ, and we trusted him for the results. I remember that we were at the beginning of May this year, so we are talking about this year. Beginning of May, or maybe end of April, with money left just for one more month of ministry. We didn't know what the future would bring for us, but... Somehow, the Lord gave us the faith to keep going. And at the end of May, we received a generous gift from who? From you, from your church, which kept us going for some time. At the same time, the Lord provided through other organizations and individuals, even people were visiting us and hearing about the needs, and then they felt led to, to give, although they were not part of us, not, not our members. And through all these things, the Lord made it so clearly for us that he is with us. He is building his church. Uh, he is taking care of his bride, of his church. About the same time, we took that disciplinary measure. New people started to come. Although before that point, very few people had visited our church. A lady saw us on Facebook and sent her son to check us out. The son first came by himself. Then he came with his wife, and then he came with his mom. His wife confessed Christ during the Explore course we did with her. We took her through the Gospel of Mark. We explained the Gospel, and then she confessed faith in Christ through that. The guy recommitted his life to the Lord. He is part of our small group now, along with his wife. And his mother decided to get baptized in our church. So in July this year, we had a baptism with three people, with Michaela, who is or the lady on my right, Juana, her daughter-in-law, and then Daniel. Daniel, our video guy, who had been coming to our church from the beginning, with his Christian wife, Rebecca. But after two years of hearing the gospel and editing sermons, <laughs> he confessed Christ. So in September, we welcomed them as members, along with two other uh, people, with Doro, who uh, brought his wife and his mother to our church, and with another lady called Anna, who was praying for a church in Ploest. And from the moment she came, she, she came recently, but from the moment she came, she stayed with us. Christ is building his church in Romania, and you've been part of this. For your faithful prayers, I know that some of you are praying for us pretty faithfully, and 
you've been part of what God has been doing in Romania and in Ploiești. We, we thank you for your prayers, for your support, for your financial support, for having Stefan and I here today. You've been part of what God is doing in the world. Thank you so much for your partnership in the gospel. And I would like to, to pray for you now, because you prayed for us, and I would like to pray for you if that's okay. Let's bow our heads. Our Father God, thank you so much for today. Thank you for Christ who died for our sins, so that we have a relationship with you, so that we are a part of, of your new people. Thank you for making us citizens in your people. Thank you that there are so many people here who have received Christ, who have that hope and that assurance of salvation. I pray, Father, um, for my brothers and sisters here, that you continue to bless them. I know they are praying for a lead pastor. I pray that you will guide them in this process, and as soon as possible, they would have the right, the right person for, for this important role. I thank you that you protected this church. I know the story. I know the, what they've been through, but in, you've been so faithful, and I pray, praise you this morning for the way you've been preserving this church. It's your church, and thank you for that. I pray, Father, for all the people connected with this church. Maybe they are not here today physically. Maybe they are watching online. Pray that this church will come together physically, will gather together, will be again what it used to be before COVID. And people would come and would fill this room, would praise you, would worship you, would trust you together, would encourage each other um, and um, I pray that um, you will continue to, uh, to give new life to many people in this place. And many will uh, be uh, baptized, many will be discipled in this church. Father, thank you again for, for Hope Markham. Thank you for our partnership in the gospel. Thank you that you put us together in this work, amazing work of sharing the gospel, the good news about Jesus with people around us. We, pray, we praise you, we thank you, we pray all these things in Jesus' name. Amen.